Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this part of the series, we are going to add the game over screen. For now, when we collide with these obstacles, nothing is happening. So we are going to check for collision. Then we are going to display some kind of game over screen so that we can replay the game. If you didn't watch my previous videos, go ahead and check them out. We are making a 2D platformer game for beginners. And before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so that you don't miss my next videos. And let's jump right into it. So to check for collision, we have a built-in function that is called onCollisionEnter. So this function is called whenever the player collides with an object, whether it's an enemy or any kind of object. And we're going to use this method to check if our player collides with an enemy. In such case, we are going to display a game over screen. And to achieve that, let's create a C Sharp script that is responsible for the player collisions under the scripts folder. Let's right click, create C Sharp script, and let's call it player collision. And let's drag in our C Sharp script. And as you can see, it's attached to it. Then let's open it up in Visual Studio. So first of all, we don't need the start and the update methods. And let's use the onCollisionEnter function. We just need to write onCollisionEnter. And we're going to use the onCollisionEnter2D. That's because we are making a 2D game. So this function is going to be called whenever the player hits an object. Then we can check if it's the enemy using this collision variable. For example, we can check for the tag or the name of the enemy. In such case, we are going to display a game over screen. But for now, we will just use a debug.log. And to check that we have collided with an enemy, we can use if then collision dot transform dot tag. And if it's an enemy tag using equals enemy. In such case, we are going to use debug dot log. And let's display game over. And let's save our script. Then make sure to attach the player collision script to the player. Also make sure that all of the enemies has some kind of collider or the function will not work. For example, here I have this enemy and it has a box collider 2D. The same thing for the saw and the uh, chain. Also let's change the tag of the enemy. So select the enemy and let's change the tag from an tag to an enemy tag. But you can see it from here. We can add a new one using add tag. Then let's hit this plus icon and let's call it enemy. Then save. And now you can assign the enemy tag. The same thing for the saw and this chain. You see that we have a circle collider 2D. And let's change the tag to the enemy tag. And the same thing for the saw. Of course, you need to select the object that has the collider, like this one. Then let's hit play. And as you can see, we have the message under the console, game over. And instead of using this debug.log message, we are going to create a game over screen that we are going to enable when the game is over. Also, we can destroy the player or disable it so that we can't move. So let's start by adding the game over screen. Let's right click. Then under UI, I'm going to create a panel. And that's going to create a canvas as well, where we have all of the UI elements like this panel. And let's change the name to game over panel. So first of all, I want to change the color to a black one. Also, I want to add some kind of padding by changing the left side to 150 pixels and the same thing on the right side. Then let's create a button so that we can replay the game. So let's right click UI and let's use a button. I'm going to call it replay button. So for me, I'm going to remove the text. I'm using few sprites. So under the sprites folder, I have this replay button. Let's use it as a source image. Just drag in the sprite under the source image and let's change the width and the height like 100 by 100 or maybe 60 by 60. 
I think that's okay. And finally, I want to add a text like you have died using right click UI and let's use the text mesh pro and we need to import it using this button. Then let's close this window and let's change the text like you died. Then I want to move it a bit to the top by changing the Y position to 100 and let's center this text horizontally and vertically. So you have more options. For example, we can change the font style to bold or we have this one and it's called small caps and I like it. And I think that's okay for now. So this is going to be disabled by default. We're going to enable this game over panel when the game is over. So let's go back to the C sharp script. Of course, you could enable it under here, but that's not practical at all. We can create a separate script like player manager or game manager that manages the states of the game, like game over, game post, and so on. And to do that, let's start by creating another script under the scripts folder. And let's call it player manager. Of course, we need to attach the script to an empty game object. So let's create a new one. And let's call it player manager as well. And let's drag our player manager script. Then let's open it up in Visual Studio. So here we are going to define some kind of global variables, like if the game is over or not, whether the game is paused or not, and so on. And to do that, we use a static variable using public, then static. And let's start with a boolean. I'm going to call it is game over. So by default, the game is not over. We can initialize this under the await function. So this function is like the start function. It's called whenever we start the game, but it's called just before. And normally we use it to set up some global variables like the boolean is game over. I'm going to initialize it to false. And because we have declared this variable as public static, we can access it from the player collision script. Under this if statement, instead of using this debug.log, let's change the variable to true using player manager, then dot and the name of the variable, and let's set it to true. Then we can go back to the player manager script and do whatever we want. So under the update function, we can check if the game is over. In such case, we are going to enable our game over screen. And to do that, we need to add a reference to it using public game object. And let's call it game over screen. And then to enable this screen, we have the function dot set active. And let's give it a true. So let's save our script. Then let's go back into Unity. And before we hit play, we need to reference our screen and it's under the canvas. So let's drag in the game over panel under this game over screen variable and let's hit play. And there you go. We have our game over screen, but we can move. So we need to make sure to disable our player or destroy it. Also, we need to add a functionality to this button. It's not doing anything for now. And to do that, we can go back to the script. And here we can disable our player because this script is attached to the player. We can use game object dot set active, then false. Then let's create a new function to replay the level. I'm going to create it under the player manager script using public void and let's call it replay game or replay level. We will have different levels later on and this function is going to load our current level using the scene manager. So let's go up here and use unity engine dot scene management. Then we can load the scene using scene manager dot load scene. So this method takes the scene name or the scene index and it's going to load it. And that's how we replay the level. For now, we have only one level, which is called sample scene. So let's give it a name like level 01. Then let's go back to the script. Basically, we can replay the level 
by entering the name level 01 but we need to make sure that this function loads the current active level and to get the current active scene we can use scene manager dot get active scene so this is a method make sure to add the parentheses dot build index so we can load our scenes using the name of the scene like level 01 or we could use the index basically each level has an index and to access that index we can go to file build settings you see that unity has already added this level under this area and the index is zero and by the way make sure that all of the scenes are under this area or the function will not work so let's use our function and to do that we can select our button then under here we have on click here we could add the function using this plus icon then let's drag in the empty game object that has the script and under the player manager script we have our function which is called replay level and that's going to call the function whenever we click on the button and before we hit play you see that we have an error and that's because we are using the new input system so to fix this error make sure to select the event system and this event system object is created by default when we have added this canvas make sure to click on this button and the problem is fixed and let's hit play and there you go we've created a game over screen and we can replay the game over and over again so i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any question or comment make sure to write it under the comment section down below also make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss my next videos and i will see you in the next one